Welcome everyone, Dr. Mandel here. Hopefully you're having a beautiful day or night, regardless of where you are worldwide. This is a live stream. You guys have been doing really well. Thank you chatters around the world for tuning in with us. Uh, today I'm gonna to talk about the miraculous healing medicinal, medicinal properties of apples. Now, I am gonna clarify a lot of things. You hear people on the ketogenic diet, people on the paleo, people on uh, all of the different kinds of diets throughout the world that are saying, well, it has lots of sugar or, you know, should I or shouldn't I? Is it good for diabetics? Is it good for pre-diabetics? What about insulin resistance? Well, the information I'm going to share with you, which is going to be put back on my channel, so you'll be able to share this later, is going to be able to answer a lot of these questions. Let me just tell you something about medicine. When you go into a doctor with a condition and he gives you something for that condition, you have to overweigh the differences of how important it is to treat that condition versus the side effects, okay? Just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, apples do not have side effects. I just want you to look at the whole picture so you can get the grasp of where I'm coming from. First question I have for you, how many people out there, and I'm sure many of you are in the chat room are gonna go ahead and say yes, that they eat lots of, or drink lots of sodas, uh, baked treats, uh, like your baked goods, your simple, you know, your simple carbs, your added sugars, uh, your packaged cookies, or your applesauce, uh, your fruit juices, your breakfast cereals. How many people out there eat cereal every morning? Okay. And there are millions because that's a whole aisle or two aisles of a grocery store. So I know it's being sold. So people are out there eating different cereals. And I'm not going to mention which ones even if it's recommended by the American uh, Medical Association or the Dietary Association. But remember, all those packages are processed. They're processed, they're refined, they're added, they're stripped. And you're worried about an apple? Well, just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the glycemic index. For those of people who don't know what the glycemic index is, this is a numerical uh, index that ranks carbohydrates based on the rate of glycemic response. So this is actually the conversion of glucose within the human body. The glycemic index uses a scale of zero to 100, the higher values given to foods that cause the most rapid rise in blood sugar. And pure glucose serves as a reference point that's given 100 in the glycemic index response. So the higher the number of the glycemic index, the faster the spike and the faster absorption that sugar or glucose gets into the cells. And that causes our body to get really tired when it starts to come down. So I need you guys and ladies and gentlemen to look at the glycemic index. I'm not going to post it here. I don't want to take much time. And look at the foods you eat every single day. And look at those foods on the glycemic index. And you make a decision for yourself. Are you eating the right foods? Well, if I come along and say to you right now, we're worried about blood sugar. All right, diabetics. Well, let me just tell you that the American Medical Association, Association, Diabetic Association, recommends fruits and vegetables, although apples are up on the, all the way up on the list because of their fiber. And if I also tell you that apples have a low glycemic index, that means it goes along with strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries. So think about it. There are sugars in berries, there are sugars in apples, but you've got something more important. It's called fiber, the pectin and the fiber. So I want you, and I'm going to kind of move through this real quick because there's a lot I want to talk about, but I want you to understand that don't look at the sugar, look at the glycemic index because the studies show that some people have eaten three, four apples a day who are diabetics, pre-diabetics, insulin resistant, and their sugars never were altered by eating apples. So I can tell you that apples are extremely healthy and I'm gonna tell you more than they're healthy because I am gonna to prove to you and explain to you the, the, the health benefits of what this can do for your heart, your lungs, your entire system, your colon, and then you're gonna make a determination. Hey, Dr. Mandel mentioned something about apples that's sticking in the back of my mind. What I was thinking about them Hmm, maybe was the wrong thing. But again, in all respect, I'm not here to mislead you nor tell you what you should or shouldn't do. I just like to give you the facts so you can make your own determination, your own opinion, 
on what you like to do for your own body. But I will tell you that you do the research and look up the glycemic index, which is about 38 of an apple, about 95 calories total. And I want you to make up your own opinion. Now, when it comes to losing weight, there's no question that apples will give you satiety. We, the problem is we eat too much because our ghrelin levels go too high. We spike too much sugar in our body and we then get that drop, particularly those empty calories that we're talking about, those sugars, uh, those refined sugars, the cookies, and a lot of the refined sugars that are in the packages that you don't even think there are sugars. They're carbs, but carbs are, get converted to sugars. Now, what I did, if you are new to this to the program, uh, and I might have said this in my last live stream, I went on a binge of just low glycemic index fruits, strawberry, blueberry, blackberries, apples, raspberries, and I was blending up every day, every day, and my cholesterol dropped 60 points. My LDLs uh, dropped uh, 50 points. My HDLs went up. My total cholesterol uh, went down because I was eating good carbs. Now, a lot of people out there on the keto diet, I understand you need to maximize your carbs, which all respect, that's okay. But I also want you to realize that the keto diet is not a lifelong diet. Now, you may disagree with me, and I will put that towards another program, but I just want to make that comment. So losing weight, there's no question, it will definitely help you lose weight. It will actually help with heart disease, which I'll go into just a minute. It actually helps uh, fight high cholesterol as it will lower the LDLs and triglycerides, uh, which I will mention a little bit more. Um, realize that um, we do not want to take the apple without the skin and drink it. That plain fructose is not good for the liver. It can ca cause fatty liver. Drinking plain fructose, those fruit juices, if it's not natural or even if it's preserved or in the can, is not good for you. If you're going to do a little bit, try to do it with some other fiber because the fiber will sustain that balance. Remember, this is all about balance, all about homeostasis, about the pancreas secreting insulin, okay, but not too much insulin because if you have too much glucose, okay, you're going to cause it imbalance, that imbalance of that homeostasis between the pancreas and the glucose. And you're going to eventually lead into type 2 diabetes because you're going to become more insulin resistant and therefore it's going to make things a lot more complicated. Now understand when you eat sugars, they go three places. The first place is they burn off. So if you exercise, what are you worried about? You're going to burn it right off. And if you just semi-exercise and eat a good diet, Okay, it's going to get stored as glycogen. And if you eat too many carbs, it can get stored as fat. But it doesn't matter. Carbs are sugar. So you have to be aware of your own diet. So let me go over a couple things because I'm moving around quick. Um, there are so many different benefits. Antioxidants, quercetin, catechins, uh, chlorogenic acids. Uh, there are neuroprotective properties, particularly with dementia brain problems due to the high doses of quercetin. There are plenty of studies out there when it comes to strokes, when it comes to heart attacks. This lowers cholesterol. So the plaquing's diminished. And I'm going to talk about that. I'll show you in just a second because it's lowering the, 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 the LDLs as the HDLs will actually rise and pick up more LDLs to bring it back to the liver to get it out of the system. And you got many different elements of minerals and vitamins, which I'm not going to go on into. But in diabetes, uh, they had done studies that people's uh, glucose went lower eating apples. They did studies in China. Uh, for those who consume most fiber, have a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes. It's the 2011 review. And people who already have diabetes following a high fiber diet, they also have lower blood sugar levels. So think about this. Don't worry so much about the sugar. Worry more about the fiber. It's proven that the antioxidants that would prevent the oxidative stress which, stress, which is the cell damage that causes cancers, apples have been known to lower the risk of lung cancer, breast cancer, and colorectal cancer. It's proven. The studies are right there. 
It's proven to lower the risk of people with obesity and the nutrition levels. I am not going to go into that right now uh, because I want to move quick. So let's go to a couple other things. Let me just pick a few things out here for you that I don't want to miss. Asthmatic patients, people with lung issues. Remember, asthma is a reaction to an allergen, to something that's causing it. It could be something you're breathing in, something you're eating. Apples, the, the, the antioxidants uh, can do wonders for your lungs as well as halting asthma. So if you are an asthmatic, it's something you want to look into. Now, what about the fiber? This fiber are prebiotics. And what does this do? This feeds the probiotics. So the fiber that feeds the probiotics, it means the flora, your microbiome, which is your flora, which is the good bacteria, that's one, that's 70% of your immune system. And those who have a good, strong microbiome, a good, strong gut with good probiotics are going to lose weight much easier. So those that are trying to lose weight, you need to cleanse up. You need to make sure you get those good probiotics in there and get those prebiotics. And those prebiotics are fibers, not only in vegetables, but in apples as well. That good bacteria can do wonders for you. And that good bacteria, having a strong uh, uh, microbiome, a good gut, will halt that prediabetes or even diabetes. It can do wonders for you. Um, as I talked about asthma, it's about the antioxidants, which is prevents the oxidative damage. Uh, as the quercetin, as I talk about, helps regulate the immune system, reduces inflammation. Remember, all conditions in our body are related to inflammation. It doesn't matter if it's lupus to colitis to diverticulitis to tonsillitis. It doesn't matter. It's all inflammation. And we need to keep the inflammation down. The clotting that takes place in our arteries is not only due to cholesterol. It's inflammation because it's the inflammation that sends the body's white blood cells to the area. And as those bad cholesterol comes through, which I'll just show you in a minute, as it comes through, it starts to, it starts to thicken, starts to, to take it up. Say, come on, come on with me. It starts to build slowly over time, and that could obstruct a blood supply to the heart, which we call a heart attack, or to the brain, which we call a stroke. Now, did you know that if you are having any type of condition with your stomach, it might have been like non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which damages the lining of the stomach area. They have found that the compounds in apples, the chlorogenic acid and the catechins are the ones that can help heal stomach problems. So just consider that. It may be a great thing. We don't have to go on that medication. When it comes to bone health, uh, it's proven that when you eat apples, the antioxidants, the anti-inflammatory compounds help promote bone density and strength. Um, the bottom line is, don't be misled when it comes to apples. Let's head over here. Uh, here, I just show you the beautiful apples here. Okay, now we got the red ones, we got the green ones, we got all different kinds of apples. And the bottom line is, it doesn't really matter which apple. Now, there are some things I came across, uh, and I'm going to see if I can pull it up with you, uh, about the types of apples. And right here, it's telling us that according to Harvard uh, Gazette, apples are particularly beneficial for reducing the risk of type 2 diabetes. And if you just picked one apple, tart green apples, such as Granny Smith, are lower in sugar and therefore the best choice for people with diabetes. Okay, let's look here. You see this right here? Look inside that artery. Now we're talking cholesterol. Look on the left of that video right there. That's a slow progression of cholesterol. And that is something that could be halted and prevented by eating a really clean, healthy diet with lots of fiber. And apples are known to work hand in hand with heart health and artery health. So you want to limit that. And I think that would be a great asset. When we look at fighting heart disease, it's here. We can do it right now. Unfortunately, in the world that we live in today, there's so much within our, within our aisles of our grocery store. And the majority of the aisles of our grocery store and the inside are, is, are not the good foods. Those are the processed box foods, the, the canned foods, the shelf foods. 
the healthier foods are always on the outside of the aisles. So I want you to think back in your grocery store right now. Your vegetables, your fruits, your dairies, your, your, your healthy meats, whatever you wanted to eat, uh, your, your kefirs and yogurts and natural butters and uh, your natural you know organic eggs, always on the outside of the aisles, all the ways on the outside of the whole entire grocery store. So if you're spending a lot of your time in the aisles, you are looking for potential problems. And the last thing I wanted to do, there's an article. It's called Apple Phytochemicals and Their Health Benefits. And this is PubMed, a researched article that talks about how apples can help heart disease, arteries, lungs, prevent cancer. But I also wanted to mention on a side note, well, let me finish with that. That's going to be in below the video. You'll see the article in there. Click on it, okay? Because you're going to want to look at that article and read through it. It's going to change a lot of minds. Read that article and you will be amazed what apples can do for your health and wealth of your body. So one of the last thing before I make way is that apples, the fiber. Think about your colon. We talked about the prebiotic helping the probiotics in your gut. But what about your colon? What that fiber does, it sweeps, sweeps the toxins. It helps cleanse. It helps increase peristalsis. It makes you more regular. So you can get that transit time faster, but drink lots of water because the water will help constipation. Constipation can eventually lead to auto intoxication, which leads to more bacteria, more problems in our, into our bloodstream and more toxicity and actually the damaging effects of our liver as well because it has to metabolize and filtrate all of those toxins. So I wanna thank our audience, our, our, our people in the chat room here, uh, we are going to repost this on my channel. Please share it. And if you've not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Why? Only one reason. I want to see you, your loved ones, healthy so you can live a long, long life with your family and your beautiful friends. And one last thing right here with cholesterol. This is what we want to be aware of because high sugars will cause high cholesterol. And high cholesterol is one of the biggest number one problem we have, particularly in America, as well as many other countries throughout the world that leads to cardiovascular uh, disease. So this picture right here, oh, it doesn't want to come up. Uh, I tried. But anyways, I want to say blessings. Stay well and uh, just stay positive because we're all going to get through this. I promise you. God bless you. And we'll see you in the next video.